What I'm going to get into right now is something that I think is absolutely fantastic, something that I believe in. So much so that I actually bought a unit myself. I actually have a unit that I purchased in this project. And this project is the Mandarin Oriental on Brickle Key. It is, in my mind, the most significant project in Brickle for 30 years. And the formula for a successful building has been met in this project. And I'm gonna get into the formula and then we're gonna go through the project. So, this Mandarin project has come at the right time. It is being developed by Swire. If you don't know who Swire are, they are a Hong Kong British group with a valuation of around $25 billion. They own Cathay Pacific, they own the Mandarin brand, which is the number one brand in the world. Most importantly, they actually have a heritage here in Miami. They built Brickle City Center, two towers and a hotel and an entire shopping mall in three and a half years, staggering. They are responsible for Brickle Key and the structure of Brickle Key. So they're systemically ingrained into the Miami lifestyle and they've owned the Mandarin for over 20 years. And that project that exists there right now, the existing Mandarin Tower is going to be taken down and they're gonna put a new project up. And this is a 220 unit building. There is a 60 key hotel tower and it all sits on five acres. Now, unlike a lot of the buildings in Brickell, there's no one bedrooms and small two bedrooms. This is not designed for the rental class market. It is designed for end users. And if I rank buildings and I have done, and I look at the success of the buildings, at the bottom of our food chain, you have the normal buildings, the buildings that you go out and you can rent. And again, I've given in the blog examples of buildings right now that are what I call investment class product, somewhat generic, always rent, and they're just kind of middle of the road. Nothing wrong with them, but they are what they are. And then slightly above that, you get into what you would classify as luxury branded buildings. Now, luxury branded buildings can actually be good and bad, but in many cases, if they are branded and it's not hospitality, I've said it before, there's a sense of misdirection in some cases where I've seen brands that don't add any value to the end result. So they come a little bit above it, it's a bit more glossy, it's a bit more sexy, it's a bit more luxurious, but it doesn't necessarily actually deliver added value. And sometimes you're actually paying for the marketing on the initial outside of a project, and then when it gets going, it doesn't do as well. So those ones can be a bit of a poison chalice. Next above that, you've actually got luxury condos by established developers. They may not have a name on them, a brand name, but the name of the building, such as for example, 87 Park, or Park Grove or Vita. These are buildings that are done by very well-established developers, developers that I understand and know and believe in and, and have a good track record, whether it's Hugo Colombo or whether it's David Martin, who runs Terra Group. These are developers who build good projects. Then above that, you've got what's classified as the hospitality brands. Uh, again, you've got big developers behind them. You've got established names. You've got great architects but you have another layer, which is an actual hospitality brand, which is what we know as the hotel brand. So the St. Regis, or the Ritz-Carlton, or the Four Seasons, or Mandarin Oriental, or Amal, or any of these other big groups that are out there. And right above that, right at the top of the food chain, the very best of the best, that cream, that very thin cream right at the top, is a hospitality brand, which has an actual hotel element involved with the project. Not attached to the building, but a separate entity in the same resort complex. Perfect example would be the Four Seasons and Surfside. Another example would be Fianna House on the beach. Another one would be Addition. And then there are other examples as well like that. And those buildings, and again, we're gonna flash up and show you how much those are buildings appreciated, those give a ultra resort experience, legitimate resort experience. It is the resort experience that you would get when you go on vacation to a luxury hotel, because that's exactly what they're delivering. And that is at the very, very top, and they also on large parcels of land. And that's exactly what the Mandarin Oriental is. That's exactly the point that I'm coming to. The formula for success that I'm gonna run through very quickly right now is within Mandarin, so you can get excited about it. And then obviously we're gonna get into the units and we'll talk about the project. 
a five acre site, a large parcel of land that sits in a unique position which cannot be obstructed. There is very few buildings that in perpetuity are protected with views that will never go away. Why is that important? Because Miami is growing, it's growing fast, and this building is located in Brickell. And, and, and over the next 10 years, without doubt, absolute certainty, new buildings are gonna start coming up over Brickell, whether it's commercial, class A, or whether it's residential, and it will get busier and busier and busier and more and more blocked. And the one thing that won't change is the views on this building because there's nothing around you but water. So first thing is the location. The second thing, the established brand. This is a brand that doesn't need backing from the bank. They don't need a loan. They're not reliant on loans or interest rates. They own the land themselves, so they haven't spent excess money trying to buy the land in order to build. They've owned it for over 20 years. So they have a track record. They have deep pockets. And then obviously the brand itself, Mandarin, which is currently ranked as the number one hotel brand in the world, according to Forbes. And again, I know this is subjective, but it's an ultra luxury brand. I've had the pleasure of actually selling this project on early launch. It's not even officially launched. When I was starting this at the end of December, I started getting involved with this. Nine clients which have reservations in the building. These are a very discerning clients of mine. My database has looked at this. That is a staggering amount. So we already have well over $50 million of real estate in contract or in reservation in this product. And I've never seen that happen before. But it's clear to understand why. And because I know these numbers, it means as we go, I'm gonna be able to give you the transparency and the understanding of where the valuations are moving in this project. And of course, the existing product that's out there. The other element to it is who it's serving. Miami is a changed city. Um, Brickell, which was originally, you know, I guess, mostly classified as a rental market, 80% of the product was rentals, has now seen a huge surge of movement of buyers coming in who are coming from out of the city, New York, California, Connecticut, Boston, Chicago, and they're looking for a primary residence. They are in a position where maybe for you, you don't need the big house. Maybe the big house no longer serves you, but you still want to have vertical living. Getting large units is very, very hard. I've studied this and, and sold this level of product for many, many years. And I'll tell you that finding large four and five bedroom units, units over 3,500 square feet in any neighborhood has become extremely difficult. This building, my majority is, is populated by units that are this size. The smallest unit is the 04 line, which is 2,350 square feet. And then you've got an 05 line, which is obviously a little bit bigger. As you go through it ranges, there's the 02 line. Um, you've got around 3,300 square feet in some lines there, go up to 4,000 square feet in, in other lines as you go through the building. The 01 line is the uh, mirror of the 02 line. These are the corners. So the premier lines, the southeast corner typically is considered the most popular line in a building. That O2 line will obviously get a lot of light. There are views all the way around. So if you want a city view, you may go more O1 line. If you want more of an open view, you're gonna go for the O2 line. If you want a straight shot view, um, you might look at an O3 line. If you want to look to the Port of Miami, you might look at a high floor O5 line. Or if you want to look over to downtown and you wanna look at the bridges into the downtown Edgewater area, again, you'll go on the O5. So what we're dealing with here is, is a huge amount of variety but incredible views throughout. It's very unusual to find a building where almost systematically you have great views. It's only achievable because the building sits on this point um, of the lot, which just gives you expensive views. Almost always, there's always a dog in the building. There's a line that just doesn't work because, you know, if there's a winner, there has to be a loser, right? Well, now and again, you can get all winners. And what we have here is systematically a great floor plan, but we're talking about large units. So, you know, the saying goes, you don't wanna be the most expensive house on the street. Well, there's really no fear of that happening. Very often you go into a building, you buy a 4,000 square foot unit, you're the penthouse or you're the biggest unit in the building. That is not the case. There are many units that will be like this. Again, we're talking about high level private elevators and everything that goes with it. It's very early in the stage. This project is not gonna be completed till 2028. So, there is good and bad with everything. 
And, and really the good is this is a fantastic project with a high level of service from a great brand in a great location with incredible, almost near perfect views, not even to dimension some of the elements of it, massive terraces, 10 foot 10 ceilings and no doubt state of the art finishes. But you're also then dealing with uh, just an environment that's absolutely buzzing. The five acre site is very, very green. It's very lush, it's very tropical and you see up in the renderings. You couldn't achieve that actually in the main part of Brickle because shade will actually not allow grass to grow or not allow things to grow as well as it really should. So given the fact that you've got this five acre site, you'll actually see sunrise, you'll get sunset. The whole area will get a lot of light through the day, which again is very, very hard to achieve. Um, especially if you're in a normal urban environment with buildings around you, um, creating shades, which happens to most of the buildings that you'll see in Bricola. Some point in the day, they're shaded, and that just makes it very hard to grow. So you could imagine this oasis, this tropical green oasis in the city. The figures on this project, again, they're changing, so I'm not gonna quote the exact figures on this video. You have to pick up the phone, give me a call. I will tell you at the time of doing this video, they're very, very competitive. I think there's little out there that can compete quite against this at a particular price point for a particular class group. One of the most interesting things, which I really like, is that right now it is reservation stage. Reservation stage means that you won't actually go into contract till May or June. And why is this actually important? Normally when you buy pre-construction, you put down a deposit, you put in 20%, and you have a 15 day rescission period to make your call. Now what you're dealing with here is a window, depending on when you watch this video, uh, now between January and the end of May before you go to contract when you're just in a reservation stage. That's very interesting. To me, I view it like getting into an IPO with the option without the obligation. So as things move, you're gonna see the prices move and then you're going to be able to make your call come May or June and figure out hey this is for me or it's not but as an investment play it's very unique because you can never do this in the stock market you can never just have the option to buy an IPO secure a price but not have an obligation once you buy it you buy it that makes it very interesting for many many other reasons who is it not for who shouldn't buy it well quite simply of course it's budget dependent if you can't wait, that's probably not gonna work for you. This 2028, although I do have clients who are actually buying smaller units in other areas to keep them busy while we're waiting for the project to be built. And also for those who want the beach, this is the urban core. This is obviously very central, but it is the urban core environment. So if you wanna be on the sand, don't buy this product, it's not for you. For everyone else out there, if you are looking for a luxury condo that wants to be in the middle of everything, but in a little private oasis, if you want a large unit and you want a high level of service, this is for you. So much so that I'm a believer in this. And I've done this for so long and I rarely, I never, ever, ever talk in this manner where I'm like, I'm all in on something. So give me a call. I'm unfiltered, I'll tell you the truth, I'll tell you what I think, and I'll give you numbers. You don't have to take my word for it. We have full analysis on everything that we do. We have condo geeks, we have our market analytics reports, we have all the data. And much like all the other videos for all the other condos that we analyze, we view all of them. So you can stack this up. You can compare this to St. Regis. You can compare this to Vita. You can compare this to other new projects that may be coming into the market, of which I am aware of, and there are a few. You can even, even compare it to new product on the beach because for everyone, sometimes it's not just about the location specifically in Miami, it's about how I can be served and looked after in my second home or first home. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps. As always, like, subscribe, see my information below, call me, and please stay tuned soon for another David Sidden's Group video. Thank you for watching.